Hello friends, very happy to connect with you all through this video again. I am Sundar from Canary Capital Solutions. So what happened to the markets this week? This week we had our union budget and post the budget market actually started rallying and the rally was to a very good level. So what exactly happened in this budget? That's what we are going to see in this video. So what is a budget? Budget is nothing but a financial statement of the government which actually sees the total revenue receipts and the total expenditure for the year. So that's the union budget. So why is this budget very important? We all know that we have gone through one of the worst crisis in the history of mankind in the last 100 years. Post the COVID, in fact, the COVID is still prevalent in many of the uh, countries across the world. India is slowly and steadily recovering. So one of the worst crises which the humankind actually went through. So during this phase, what exactly happened to the economy is the income stopped almost, but the expenses started going up. So that is the situation in which individuals were there, companies were there and in fact, even the countries. And for the countries, it was a double whammy because when the income stopped, the expenses actually skyrocketed because they had to heavily invest in the health, health infrastructure, on the vaccines, in terms of preventive measures and things like that. So it was a very interesting situation because through this budget, a lot of hope can be created and positivity can be created. So we are going to see whether the budget actually created it or not. In fact, post the budget, many of them commended that it is a very growth oriented budget. So let's understand what the budget is all about. The overall business sentiment has been weak for the last one year. And to revive the economy, we need a lot of spending. And who can spend? There are three levers to the economy. One is the government, the other is the companies and the last is the consumers or the individuals. When the business sentiment is weak, both the private companies and the individuals are in a very negative state of mind, not knowing what the future is. So this is the time government has to take that responsibility of spurring the demand and reviving the economy. And that's what exactly this budget has done. And that is why the entire world is calling this as a growth oriented budget. So the government actually opened up its purse in terms of its spending and the spending also went into a lot of capex related spending. So what is this capex related spending? So let's understand the concept. There is something called as revenue expenditure and something called as capital expenditure. A revenue expenditure is something like running your day to day expenses. Like for example, if you run your household, you will have to pay your rent, you will have to buy your groceries, etc, etc to keep your home running smoothly. Assuming you have joined a course to skill yourself better, to upskill yourself, you that is also part of spending, but that spending is treated as an asset because this is going to upskill you in turn, your income can go up over a period of time. So this is called as capital expenditure. So what government has done this time is they have spent a lot of money or they've increased their allocation towards capital expenditure by about 35 percentage compared to the last year. So which was a big surprise. And in fact, that's the thing which the government, that's the thing the market was actually expecting. And because of that, with the finance ministry delivering on the spending towards capital expenditure, market really liked it and gave a big thumbs up by moving the Sensex by about more than 2000 points in a single day. So what was the size of the capital expenditure? So the capital expenditure was to the tune of 5.5 lakh, lakh crores, which is a large number, which is 35% more than the previous year. And this 5 lakh 50,000 crore is going to be spent across infrastructure projects like railways, warehousing, roads, ports, etc, etc, with over 7,400 projects to be invested. So to fund this entire projects, we need a lot of innovative ideas in terms of raising capital. And one of the biggest game changer in this budget is the government actually started looking at more of privatizing companies, more of 
asset monetizing and things like that which was a very very bold decision by the government because all these years we were running many of the business through the government and we all know that they were also one of the biggest loss makers for the government and as per economics it is very clear that government should not be in the business of running a business they should be more in terms of governing the business and handholding the business and not really running the business and also history suggest wherever governments have actually run businesses those have actually incurred huge losses to the exchequer so it is better that the companies can be handed over to some of the efficient private players and can be governed well so that it can create wealth both for the country as well as for the government and the other interesting aspect where the government has worked upon is in terms of increasing the tax base so what was a 3 and a half crore kind of a tax payer assessment in 2014 that is actually increased or almost doubled to about 6 and a half crores in the last 5 6 years so which is a tremendous thing where the compliance level at the company and also at the individual level have increased tremendously so the government has taken lot of bold decision that's why markets have really liked it and given a huge thumbs up so what is it there for the individuals like you and me the best thing is there is no change in the tax so there is not been any tweaking here and there so it is a status quo when it comes to the taxation for all individuals like you and me there has been some relaxation when it comes to senior citizens who are above the age of 75 so this is one thing which many people are misunderstanding so let me explain this to you people who are above the age of 75 have to pay tax the only thing is the only relaxation given to them is in terms of the compliance of filing their tax and a senior citizen who has an income only from pension and interest income is only eligible for this if somebody who is above 75 who is also getting income from rent or maybe from uh, capital gains and etc etc they will not be eligible so only on the compliance part the senior citizens have been given a little bit of leeway another interesting thing is bringing up the faceless dispute mechanism when it comes to taxation so this has been a uh hard burn for lot of tax payers where every time the income tax officer keeps questioning you so that was a big compliance headache for many of the individual tax payers so now what they have done is they have brought in a faceless mechanism where even if there is a dispute the dispute can be settled through faceless which avoids human intervention by which lot of corruption and other things can be eliminated and next important thing is in terms of reopening your cases earlier your cases your tax cases can be opened up to 6 years that has been reduced to 3 years now so that is also a big relief another small tweaking which has happened in terms of ulip which is a insurance uh, unit linked insurance plan where earlier any proceeds from the ulip proceeds were tax free so now if you are annual premium is more than 2 and 1/2 lakhs in a year it is not only through one yearly policy it is combined with all yearly policies in a single year assuming you have a 50000 yearly policy and a 2 lakh yearly policy both put together in a financial year if your total outgo of premium is more than 2 and 1/2 lakhs the proceeds from the yearly at the time of maturity will be taxable which brings in a lot of level playing field in line with mutual funds because your mutual fund also manages money through investing in the stock market through stock market and other debt instruments similarly ulip also manages money in terms of investing in stock markets and other debt related instruments in your equity mutual funds you are taxed at 10% when it comes to long term capital gain the ulip did not have a taxation now with the taxation coming in the level playing field for mutual funds and ulips have gone up and another point which we need to keep in mind is your employee provident fund contributions if your overall contribution in a year is more than 2.5 lakhs then the interest accrued from that contribution will be taxable going forward so these are some of the small small changes but broadly no changes your income tax slab remains the same i have shown you the chart just to explain where your income tax slab remains there is no change in the income tax slab so 
these are some of the uh, points to be kept in mind so just to summarize it was a very growth oriented budget focusing more on capital expenditure no new taxation so which gives a lot of clarity and stability in the policy decision paradigm shift to the government when it comes to looking at privatizing many of the businesses and if all these things are implemented well definitely we are looking for a good potential for the economy to grow in the coming years ahead hope you found this information useful there are many parts to the budget i have restricted myself to speak about the most important things which i felt will add value to you and which is important to you thanks for watching this uh, video the next video sensex at 50000 level what you should do as an investor should you be investing or should you be booking profits and exiting so that's the video we are going to see next time please do subscribe to our youtube channel canary capital solutions and please press the notification bell icon thank you for watching